Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. It's your brother Yahya Ibrahim. This is Juz 2, uh, our second installment of our daily tafsir of a Juz a day. So this Juz, we're going to summarize it in the next five minutes, inshaAllah. Uh, Allah begins, and this is uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Qur'an, and it's halfway through the Surah. Allah begins the Juz, this section, by speaking about the Qibla, the direction of prayer. And he speaks about it in, in the way that there was a contention that was being made by other faith-based communities in Al-Madinah, in particular the Jews who were contesting why the Prophet ﷺ had turned his direction back to Mecca rather than Jerusalem. And the Prophet ﷺ, is instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond to them that this has always been the intention of the Qibla, that the oldest house, the first place of worship has always been Mecca al-Mukarramah and that was a place that was of the greatest ancestry of humanity in terms of their faithfulness and worship. And none despises it except that there's a problem within their heart. It's a beautiful place and a beautiful environment. Uh, the Qibla is also seen as a place of moderation. It's uh, not a place that is meant to subdue anyone. And it's not meant to be that unless you follow it, that you can't have any faithfulness. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about purity, which is the third theme, that purity is in the heart of being more important than the direction that the prayer is being prayed towards. Uh, wherever you turn, you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face present to receive your prayers. But moderation is spoken of in the two uh, extremes of love and hate. Never love anything too much that you love them in a way that only Allah should be loved and never hate anything in a way that makes you incapable of honoring them and loving them in the future is an eternal message in that very early section of the Jews. Allah then, gen then transitions and speaks about patience, sabr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one section of verses, three to four verses, uh, verse 152 or 53 of Surah Al-Baqarah begins by saying, um, that you will be tested and you're going to be tested in all aspects of your life in your wealth in your health in your family in your prosperity in your in your happiness um, in your faithfulness but the outcome is give good news to those who remain enduring with patience there's a fruit to that there's something that will come out of that hardship which is that they will find their happiness in this life and find contentment in the next life and this is one of the great statements, uh, profound statements in the Qur'an, that you can find happiness and contentment here with a level of patience even during your hardship, and you will find reward waiting for you in the Akhirah. The next statement is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He begins to introduce the concept of fasting, abstinence and siyam. And siyam is one of those great mysteries of life. It's something that has been done by the very earliest of humanity, Adam alayhi salam. He was ordered to fast from that tree. Don't go to that tree, don't eat from its fruit. And it's one of those actions of worship that inculcates all the other aspects. In fasting, you have to pray, you have to be devout, you have to control your mouth, you have to control what you say, what you do, what you see, what you hear. It's something that raises your spirit. Perhaps you can ascend to piety, which will become one of the great themes of this Jews uh, after the transition from patience. So the rules and the spirit of fasting are outlined in these verses. Soon after, Allah speaks about Hajj. Here, Allah speaks about Hajj in terms of its rituals, not necessarily of its spirituality. The spirituality is addressed in a chapter called Surah Al Hajj, but here is where the rules of Hajj, uh, the sightings of um, uh, of the days and what you do on wh which particular day and when you descend from Arafat all of it is spoken about in great detail teaching the Ummah their uh, manasik, their rituals of Hajj. Then there's a transition to family law and this is given a great deal of attention with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah speaks about family law in terms of marriage and divorce, who to marry, who not to marry, who's eligible for divorce, who should be divorced, who should be, you should try to reconcile with, what are the process of reconciliation, فَأْتُوا بِحَكَمٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا Bring a conciliatory from his side and her side, إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا If they wish to rectify, Allah will help that process. Allah speaks about remarriage, Allah speaks about widowhood and bereavement and death and uh, life after divorce and uh, all of these different things. Allah speaks about paternity and child rearing and breastfeeding laws. All of them are added in this section and it's a very important section that shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke in great detail about this um, eternal process of families. 
All of that is in the backdrop of taqwa, fearing God and being obedient and conscious to Him. All of it is linked to taqwa and fearing our oppression that we cause and that we bring upon other people. Allah then transitions from that to a real life demonstration of it, where Allah speaks about David and Goliath, and Allah speaks about oppression in the fame of Goliath, and Allah speaks about those who are weak and disadvantaged. And it's almost as if there's this paradox that you have your uh, this sim- uh, similitude, you have your wife and you have your children, you might think of yourself as a tyrant and controlling of them now, but know that there is always going to be a day of uh, vengeance for those who are, are cast down. And therefore, be good with your families, be good with your husband, be good with your wife, be good with your children. David and Goliath is that eternal struggle of good versus evil, of weakness that ascends to supremacy and power on account of conviction and faith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the importance of remaining patient. رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا O Allah, shower us with patience, allow us to be patient. وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ And give us ascendancy over those who wrong us. اللهم أمين الكافرين And those who have uh, turned away from you in faith. Impatience then is juxtaposed to that as hastiness leads to destruction. And when they were spoken to, the people who were with David, they said, Yes, of course we will fight for the truth. But when they were confronted with a small test, don't drink from the Jordan River except one hand, many of them could not be patient. Many of them were washed away with insincerity. It's only the few and the virtuous who are delivered victory. And that's a message to our ummah today in these days of darkness that we see, that if you remain firm, keep the course, purify your heart, and raise your spirituality, and look after what's most important, know that of the most difficult and strict of things will bring about the best causes. And that's how Juz 2 ends uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, and the next juz will begin with Ayatul Kursi in the first few verses. I hope you'll join me for that, inshallah, uh, tomorrow. Bi idnillahi ta'ala. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's your brother Yahya Ibrahim uh, with a juz a day, and this was part two. Wassalamu alaikum.